Dutch Grand Prix review. Uh, it's just me tonight, Alex, your host. Um, Dan was off for the evening, so I'll be taking over for this review. Shouldn't be a very long review, to be honest. The race wasn't all that entertaining, as people know my love for Zanvoort is just growing and growing. And when I mean growing, I mean going downhill. Anywho, <laughs> let's continue on with the uh, review. So, obviously, we'll, we'll go through the results in a minute, but I really wanted to touch on the biggest news of the weekend, uh, despite Lando Norris winning his second ever career race. Um, I think the biggest news of the weekend is what's happened after the uh, Dutch Grand Prix, not during or before, uh, but after. As Logan Sargent, Bryce has already commented, <laughs> Logan Sargent is officially out of Formula One after the $1.7 million accident he had. Um, by the way, I had to put a price tag on it because it was pretty horrendous. It was obviously a big shunt, but unfortunately it could have totally been avoided um, with his driving. And this sees that Logan is out of Formula 1 and will no longer race for Williams for the rest of the year and was replaced, quite surprisingly, by... Um, what's his first name? Col Pinto's his name. I can't remember his first name. Hang on. I've forgotten his first name. What was his first name? Oh my god, I'm having a blank. Franco. Franco Colapinto. Now, Colapinto is a F2 racer um, who is a reserve driver for the Williams squad, I believe. Um, now, the question is why? Why is Franco Colapinto joining Williams when there were two former F1, or not former, you know, they've driven Formula 1 cars before, experienced drivers in Mick Schumacher, who Mercedes and Alpine were willing to lend to Williams for the rest of the year. Or Liam Lawson was also um, linked to the seat who Red Bull were going to lend to Williams. So honestly, I'm not really sure why Williams chose Franco Colapinto. Maybe there's a um, something in his contract that sees him get promoted to F1 if something happens to either Alex or Logan. Um, so yeah. Look, obviously, I don't think it can get any worse with Logan out. So, yeah. I guess just that's the way it is, really. So, obviously, they didn't want to maybe deal with the... Not headache, but yeah. Headache, let's call it, of borrowing a Liam Lawson or a Mick Schumacher from Mercedes or Red Bull. And they just decided to go their own way and pick Franco. Bryce has written, why Franco? Well, I think that's the only reason that I can come up with. So, unless someone has a better reason, I'm not really sure what that would be. But yeah, Logan Sargent, officially out of F1. Uh, he had the one points finish, which was actually due to Lewis Hamilton and Leclerc being disqualified in, in the US last year. And that's it. So, yeah. Jordan's written, hey. Hi. Hi, Jordan. Welcome to the stream. Obviously, if you're listening to this on Spotify or YouTube the next day, which will be tomorrow, I recorded this last night live on TikTok. So if you do want to check out the um, podcasts that are live streamed, do check out our TikTok and social medias um, where we will let you know when those are happening. Uh, Zach Moffat's written here, Daniel Ricciardo should take Sergio's place at Red Bull. Yes, he should. No need say more. <laughs> Everyone agrees with that. Um, actually, speaking of Sergio Perez, very briefly, I'll mention this, but um, today NASCAR announced that they're racing at the same track that F1 race at in Mexico City, which in my mind is potentially a replacement for F1. I don't know what time of year they're racing at just yet. It hasn't I don't think that got quite announced yet, just announcing that next year they'll have a round in Mexico, which is great because they do have a, um, they do have a um, Mexican driver in Daniel Suarez. Um, so yeah, let's see if that replaces the Mexican Grand Prix potentially. Don't know. That's just the first thing that me and the OTM guys thought could be the reason why this is happening at this time. 
Uh, Soul Sniper has written, what are your thoughts on the Dutch Grand Prix? Well, we actually haven't got into that yet. I've just been talking about Logan Sargent, um, unfortunately, getting kicked out of Formula 1 by um, Williams. So, yeah, let's, let's get into the Dutch Grand Prix. Um, obviously, we had Lando Norris dominate the weekend, um, qualified pole, and won the race by a considerable 22-second margin. And no one could catch him. Uh, Max did try. And he did lead the first 18 laps. Um, then obviously Lando got the lead and never looked back. Um, would be a, a, quite a, I don't know, it's the first time that Max has actually had what he would do to people normally, if that makes sense. You know, just get the lead and never see them again. So to have the McLaren do this is... Quite a considerable statement. People are now saying that finally they think that McLaren have the fastest car on the grid. I agree. I also said that a couple month, a couple months ago, so not really surprised. Um, but I'm also thinking that Lando Norris is now a world championship caliber driver. Um, obviously, he had a few rough trots a couple, you know, over the last couple of years. You know, just not being able to stitch together a race or letting go of some wins, <clears throat> Sochi. Um, examples like that are just where Lando could have had his first win before this year. And obviously he got it in Miami. A couple comments here. Max is struggling big time in the Red Bull. Yeah, well, it's finally time to see them struggle. Yeah, Max didn't put up a fight, says Bryce. Um, yeah, Lando and Max have swapped the normal. Yeah, true. Shag wrote, people are saying Lando's car is illegal. Well, yeah. Who knows? Not really sure. Um, and then I don't, and Bryce has written, I don't think Lando has the consistency. Well, yeah, look, that is an issue. And I'm not necessarily saying he can win the championship this year. I just think that. He has some experiences now, a couple of wins here and there. Um, I think he's finished on the podium. I think, you know, I think the vast majority of people he's finished on the podium ahead of. Um, Lidsville's written, I agree with Bryce saying Lando's inconsistent. Look, I agree too, to a point, but I think now he's getting that consistency. So maybe. Um, and then Bryce saying also that Lando's car was legal in Austria, which is interesting considering he got taken out by Max anyway. And then there's also written here, do I play F124? No, I do not. I've played every F1 game up until now. Just because literally nothing changed. And apparently the handling got worse in the game, so I'm not going to bother. And I said before, I barely even have time to go on the simulator, um, as it is these days. So, um, yeah, I'm not going to, unfortunately, spend the money to play a game that I'll probably play once, which is exactly what I did with 23. <laughs> anyway... Uh, let's continue down the field. Obviously, we've got Max Verstappen in second. We've talked about Max enough, I think. Um, first time he hasn't won the Dutch Grand Prix, though. Which I did say, I think that, um, yeah, I didn't think he'd win this year's. Unfortunately, um, if you've watched uh, episodes in the past, that you know that I'm not a huge fan of Zanvoort as a track. Not even just for F1, but especially for F1. It just doesn't suit it. It's just too fast. There's not enough corners um, that you can overtake on. Literally, it's turn one. That might be it. <laughs> that actually might be it um, for passing corners. And um, yeah, that's just what I think of Zanvoort. And so I, I'm not really surprised at these. Like I was doing the numbers on the movements up and down the grid. And besides maybe Hamilton, um, Albon... And science, not many people moved up that much. Um, so, yeah, not really an F1 track I would call Zanvoort. Lidsville has written that Leclerc drove very well. I agree with you, Lidsville. I definitely agree. Um, he went up three spots in the race and, um, yeah, deserved the podium. We'd said a couple um, for the last couple of months that since Monaco, his um, our results have gone downhill. But good to see him back on the podium. Uh, Zanvoort is good when DTM is there. Yeah. Pretty much anything but F1, I'd say. 
Ugh. Apologies. Uh, so Sniper has asked, how do you think Lewis will go in red for his first season with them? Well, I think very well. I think he will surprise some people. I think just in the fact that if the car is the same way as the car is now in terms of pace on the scale, the being the third slash fourth best car in the field, which is similar to where Mercedes are now anyway, so it won't be a huge difference, I don't think, to where or what he's producing now. However, I think he has the potential to win a championship for Ferrari. Maybe not next year, maybe not next year, but maybe 2026, unless Adrian Newey builds a rocket ship of an Aston Martin and then Fernando Alonso might, you know, have something to say about that. But he'll be like 43 or 42, so maybe not. And Lance Stroll ain't going to win anything, so <laughs> who knows? Um, Ferraris might be black in Monza. Yeah. Um, actually, Bryce has led me to a, one of the news points I written down was um, Ferrari have released a carbon fiber spec race suit. Don't know if it's been in the race car too, but <sighs> so so tired. Um, race suit for the boys in Ferrari, which looks epic. And if they have a polo shirt of that, I'm gonna buy it. Or you know, if Ferrari are watching and want to send me one, extra large, thanks. Um, so Sniper, do you think Lando is gonna get Max for the championship? Well, actually, this I actually said this before. And I want all seven people to comment <laughs> who's watching right now. Um, I said this before, so if you were here before, I'm going to repeat myself. But there is a fun fact going around that if Lula, sorry, if Lando Norris were to win every single race for the rest of the year and Max Verstappen finished second in every single race for the rest of the year, that Lando Norris would lose the World Championship by seven points, which was the exact same difference um, between Lando and Oscar Piastri at the Hungarian Grand Prix. Just think about that. Could you imagine if that would have happened? And the reason Lando Norris lost his first F1 championship was because he let his teammate through to win a race. Just let that sink in for a minute. I just, if I was Lando, I'd be furious. Yeah, it would be crazy. So, Soul Sniper, the answer to your question, I don't think he's going to win it this year, but I think from now on, he's in the contention to win any championship. Um, do, 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 just reading some comments here. Oh, apparently they are going to run a black car. I don't think they're going to run a black car, but black livery. Uh, sorry, black um, race suits. So... Yeah, I guess we'll find out soon enough. Um, all right, who's next? Oh, speaking of Oscar Piastri, um, this is actually written, there'll be a bit of anger between the teammates. Yes, very much so. Um, yeah, speaking of teammates, Oscar Piastri finished fourth, lost one position during the race after qualifying third. Um, didn't see much of him, to be brutally honest. Um, yeah. Cameras weren't really on him besides him. He was battling with uh, Charlotte Leclerc for the last place in the podium. Um, it's interesting to see that, kind of like the Perez Verstappen deal, just not as bad. But yeah, it's quite crazy to see the difference in drivers with the same car. But I think Lando's car is specked up a bit, potentially with all this um, illegal talk. Who knows? Soul Sniper, who do you think will replace Lewis? That is a good point. We still don't know who is going to replace um, Lewis Hamilton and Mercedes. Obviously, people are saying it's a potential lock-in for Kimi Antonelli, their little 17-year-old weapon in F2. Uh, yeah, who knows? I think that'll be the way they go. The only person I can think of that they'll put in is maybe Mick Schumacher. I don't know. I'm only saying that because they, that's his, that's their reserve driver. It's the only reason why I'm saying that. Oscar still finished every lap. <laughs> yes, he has. Um, Bryce has this um, 
theme where he's found that Oscar has finished every single lap of the year. So um, he's going to continue to say that until he eventually doesn't. Um, Carlos Sainz finished in fifth. He made up five positions during the race. So Ferrari had really good race pace this weekend, which was surprising and fantastic to see at the same time. Um, it's good to see that Sainz has got his mojo back. He had a few um, dud races there for a little bit. Um, so yeah, good to see him back up there and quick. Well, you know, fifth is not up there, up there, but he was quick. You know, qualified tenth and made his way all the way up to fifth. Uh, Sergio Perez finished in P6. He actually made Q3 as well, which was a shock. Um, not much to say on him. Obviously, the signing of, oh, sorry, the continuation of his contract during the summer break was a shock to most. And, um, yeah, that water, I don't know. It's really hard to discuss Sergio Perez anymore because everyone kind of agrees that he shouldn't be there. And, um, yeah, who knows. A lot of comments coming in about the Lewis Hamilton driver replacement um, at Mercedes. So we'll go through seventh place first, which is George Russell, who's going to be the teammate of this new driver. Uh, he finished seventh. Unfortunately, lost three positions during the race, so didn't have a great one. Um, he ran a weird strategy that had him on softs at one point of the race. So, <sighs> Yeah, interesting to say the least. Um, him and Lewis had interesting strategies, but Lewis, um, who was next in eighth, um, made up six positions, but he had a penalty for impeding Sergio Perez in qualifying, I believe it was. So yeah, not really sure what happened to Russell in terms of pace, but yeah, Lewis definitely got the better of him. Um, obviously finishing behind him still, but made up a lot of spots. Um, yeah, about the replacement, a lot of people are writing here that Science should have gone to Mercedes, um, Alonso, <laughs> his name's been thrown into the conversation, but all Bryce wants to know is, can we agree that George is overrated? Well, yeah, I don't know. I don't think he's the most overrated driver on the grid. I will say that, but he is overhyped. I wouldn't say overrated. I said, I would say overhyped. Hopefully you agree with me on that. And let's <laughs> I think Mercedes is still on holidays. Yeah, they've been away for um, quite a while. Oh, I just remembered other news. But I'll get to that. Actually, no, I'll get to it now. Because uh, this guy's teammate is new next year. Pierre Gasly finished ninth. Great points for Alpine. They were showing continuing improvements. But their new teammate for Pierre Gasly is none other than our fellow Aussie. We have a third Aussie potentially on the grid if Daniel Ricciardo stays, which is Jack Doohan. How bloody good Jack Doohan has made it to Formula 1. Um, unreal for him and the Doohan family. He's been promoted. Um, obviously, is the reserve driver this year and um, skipped Formula 2 for the year. I don't think he can... I don't know if he couldn't continue or just skipped it. But yeah, um, Jack Doohan is now the teammate of uh, Pierre Gasly next year. So, yeah, unreal stuff. Um, finally, he gets his shot. And hopefully, the Alpine, you know, for once, I'll actually be rooting for them. Uh, because, yeah, I don't really follow the Alpine team too much. But now that Jack's there, who knows? There'll be a lot more fans and... Um, yeah, merchandise at the Grand Prix will be interesting. You know, you got the new Lewis stuff. You got three Aussies on the grid potentially. Um, so yeah, crazy stuff. And um, yeah, who knows what's going to happen? And there's also Liam. If Liam Lawson somehow joins the grid, um, which Helmut Marco, by the way, said he will be on the grid next year, but we just don't know how. So potentially three Aussies and a Kiwi, as Bryce has said here. So yeah, great, great news out of the French team. Um, interesting that they got an Aussie on their team, but I guess they had, um, they had Ricardo a couple of years ago, so it's not too out of the ordinary. Um, Fernando Alonso was P10. Um, he had a bit of an interesting race. He qualified seventh, so lost three positions, unfortunately. 
And, um, yeah, it's nearly got caught up in a few battles he wish he didn't have to. Um, Nico Hulkenberg, back in 11th. I used to say he was the 11th king, but um, then he dropped off a couple of races. Um, yeah, he qualified 12th and made a one spot. Not much to say about Haas this weekend. They didn't have the greatest pace. Um, so, yeah, in interesting to say the least. I think Magnussen actually qualified last, so... Yeah, not the greatest of results for them. Um, yeah, continuing on to 12th position, which was Daniel Ricciardo. Uh, for once, he didn't lose a position. It's good. It's it's good. It's an improvement. Um, <laughs> nothing to really say about him, unfortunately. There wasn't too much to comment on his race. The midfield pack was all over the shop. Um, at one point, there was five cars going down the straight at once. Yeah, Bryce. Literally just commented that as I was saying it um, right now. Uh, yeah, at one point there was five cars going down the straight at once, three wide. And um, unfortunately for Kevin Magnussen, he lost four positions. Four, yeah, four or five positions in less than a kilometre. So yeah, he wasn't too thrilled with that. Just wrong place at the very wrong time. Uh, Lance Stroll um, was 13th. He didn't have the race pace as well as Fernando Alonso. So, yeah, it looked like Aston Martin was struggling a little bit um, for race pace. But they did have pretty good qualifying pace, 7th and 10th in qualifying. So, yeah, not really sure what happened to those boys. Um, Alex Albon, we'll talk about the Williams weekend, which was a disaster to say the least. Um, although Alex Albon did make up five spots in the race, so it wasn't all that bad. Um yeah, it was an interesting weekend for them. Um, Alex Albon got disqualified in qualifying for a illegal flaw, which James Vowles does his usual posts on the Williams social medias. And I don't know who listened to it, and if you did comment, um, because it sound, the way he was saying what he was saying made it sound like this issue has been, um, well, they haven't changed anything. So they made the car this specific way, and it just seems like finally they were caught. So it was 300 mil too wide, as Bryce has commented, thank you. But they haven't, they didn't do that this weekend. They've kind of had it the whole time. So I don't know if the FIA have just missed it for the last couple of rounds, or the whole year potentially, but... Someone's made a mistake at Williams and is now finally just being reprimanded for it. And, um, yeah, it was an interesting one. It did, it did sound, the way that James Vowles was saying his video, I'll call it, made it sound like this issue has been there the whole time and just no one's noticed. Um, if I'm wrong, do comment um, on on the podcast. So, yeah, interesting to say the least. Um, Esteban Ocon was 15th. Um, he's headed to Haas next year, unfortunately. Um, speaking of Williams, Logan Sargent in his final race in Formula 1 was 16th. Um, despite the huge crash that took place in the final practice session in the wet, yeah, still managed to do the race and managed to finish 16th. Uh, Yuki Sonoda had a disastrous race. Um, he went down six spots, so he started 11th. And finished 17th. I'm not really sure what happened. Um, there wasn't much meter about him. I, I'm just going to take a stab and guess it was just bad pace. Um, Kevin Magnussen, who I mentioned before, finished 18th. And unfortunately, uh, I'm not really sure where they're going to get any points from this year. But Sauber was last. Both Bottas and Joe Guanyu, respectively. 19th and 20th. So, yeah, not much to report. For the green machine. Um, yeah, pretty sure that was um, all that had to do with the race. Obviously, yeah, not really much happened on this boring track of Zanvoort. Um, we shall go through the uh, driver's standings. Um, not much has changed, to be honest, um, except for the fact that now the gap between Max Verstappen and Lando Norris is now only 70 points. This is the closest championship fight we've had in a couple of years. So I'm all for Lando winning more races. 
and hopefully closing this battle down. Uh, Charles Leclerc is in third, I believe he was, yeah, he was there before. Uh, Oscar Piastri, fourth. Carlos Sainz in fifth. Um, Lewis Hamilton is in sixth. Sergio Perez still in seventh. George Russell, eighth. Fernando Alonso is ninth. Lance Stroll in tenth. Uh, tied for 11th is Yuki Snowda and Nico Hulkenberg. Daniel Ricciardo is 13th. Pierre Gasly, uh, 14th. Oliver Behrman still in 15th after his one race in Saudi Arabia. Uh, Kevin Magnussen is 16th. Esteban Ocon, 17th. Alex Albon, uh, 18th. And the last person to score points. And Joe, Sargent and Bottas still haven't scored a point. And Sargent... Won't ever, unfortunately, score a point. It would be quite embarrassing if Colapinto does get a point. Yeah, just full stop. So, yeah. Bryce has written here, I like what James Vows is doing with Williams. I agree. Um, it's, uh, yeah, interesting to say the least. But they're going in the right direction, so... Well, that is all I will say about that. Um, all right, let's go through the team's championship now. Um, and Bryce has already beat me to it, but um, Red Bull and McLaren are first and second, but there's only a 30-point gap between the two of them. So watch this space. Red Bull aren't running away with this Constructors' Championships at all. Uh, in third is Ferrari, and they're only 40, sorry, 34 points actually behind McLaren. So, championship fight for the constructors is all but not over. If uh, Perez keeps continuing to struggle and McLaren keep rising, there's a poten pot potential? potential potential that these standings could do a switcheroo. Uh, Mercedes is fourth. Um, they're 100 points behind Ferrari, so don't worry about them. Um, and then, yeah, long way behind is fifth place, Aston Martin. Uh, Red Bull, sorry, not Red Bull, RB, whatever you're going to call it, uh, is in sixth. Haas is in seventh. Alpine in eighth. Miss uh, Williams in ninth. And, yeah, look, yeah, the score a point, Salba in last. So, yeah, that'll be it for the episode for the Dutch Grand Prix review. Um, hope you enjoyed the episode. Obviously, do feel free to check out our social medias. Everything with the yellow icon. Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, as you can see. Um, this will be posted on YouTube and Spotify as well. Uh, don't forget, we now have a website available. It's ltmotorsport.com, where you can check out all the news that we post. They're all in the one place, so you don't have to fish around for it all. Uh, there's a separate section for videos as well. So every podcast, every YouTube video that we have, is in the one spot and um yeah that's we're really excited about that it looks great um it's already had a bunch of um views and clicks so we're really proud of that and um this weekend if you're in adelaide if you're floating around um head up to Tellenbend because it is round four the high tech oil super series um me and daniel and ivan will be there obviously ivan's racing so It'll be a little bit busy, but Daniel and I will be floating around um, the paddock. Unfortunately, we've been told we don't have a garage, which sucks because um, Talonbin is very windy. So this is going to be less enjoyable now, but we will persevere. And um, yeah, lots of content floating around. We're also doing um, potentially potentially some giveaways on some merchandise for Slipstream Auto Sports. So... Uh, yeah, if you're in Adelaide, um, do check out the High Tech Oil Super Series. Obviously, if you're not, um, you have the option to watch it uh, on the High Tech Oil's YouTube channel. We'll do some streaming as well um, at some point, I believe. And um, obviously, the series is on uh, SPS, Boxtel, KO, um, for you to check out the action. So, yeah, it's going to be a very, very busy weekend for Daniel and I. Um, we have, obviously... That, all three days. And um, F1 is on as well. So, the Italian Grand Prix at Monza. So, and Bryce has written here, World Time Attack is also on. Didn't know that. So, yeah, lots of motorsport. We've got the radio show on Monday. From Friday to Monday, we're just screwed. <laughs> so, um, 
yeah, feel free to reach out to us, though, whilst we're at the track. Um, if you want to see something specific, we'll do our very best to accommodate everyone. So, um, yeah, that's been the episode for the Dutch Grand Prix review. I uh, hope you have a great day, and I'll uh, see you guys later. But if you're staying on TikTok, I will stay on for a Q&A about whatever you want, talk about whatever. So, um, yeah, if you do want to join this Q&A um, in the future, watch us on live on TikTok. Anyway, thank you all for listening. Bye.